Hello, I'm Luke Hatfield. You join myself and Shrewsbury Town correspondent of the Shropshire Star, Mr. Lewis Cox. We're uh, working this video by the magic of the internet. Uh, Lewis, obviously only one thing to talk about today. Um, and it doesn't come as a massive surprise, does it? Let's be honest. Uh, no. Sam Ricketts, uh, no longer manager of Shrewsbury Town. Yeah, as I um, as I wrote on our on our website, it's, uh, it's a decision that felt a long time coming. Really, uh, in terms of the club sacking Sam Ricketts, it's you know, it's never nice to see, is it? And never nice to talk about um, someone losing their job. But I know, you know, supporters obviously wanted this to happen for for a while now, for some time, um, given the the run of league results, which which frankly just built up so much pressure. It was becoming so sort of unbearable and, and almost untenable for, for the boss to carry on, really. I think, you know, obviously a 2-2 draw at MK Dons last night dropped town down to 23rd in League One after just, you know, one win so far this season in 13. It's it's an awful run, awful record that actually stretches back, as we know, to, to last season's League One that was cut short. Uh, the numbers aren't good and it's very difficult to defend them. Um, contrib contributing factors, yes. You know, we could talk about a few things, but yeah, it, the fans have been waiting for this this day, haven't they, realistically, for, for some time. And, you know, we thought it might have arrived after the weekend just gone, where they mm -hmm. sacrificed their lead at Ipswich and lost. But the, the, the board have chose to act at this time, where there's a bit of a gap in the schedule. They've got an FA Cup game next and no league game for, for another week. And yeah, Sam Ricketts' two-year stay at, at Shrewsbury Town comes to an end almost exactly on the anniversary of two years, actually. So he didn't quite make that milestone. And it's, um, yeah, he'll, he'll be frustrated and the emotions will be raw. We all know what happened in his post-match interview last night, which was mm -hmm. a little bit uncomfortable. Um, obviously, highly, highly frustrated. Looked at the end of his tether in terms of frustration, emotion. And, and yeah, here we are. got the decision at, what was it, 11.45 this morning. Mm. Yeah, and as you said, one, one league win in 13, mm -hmm. uh, 23rd. In, in in the league one table, I mean, you, there's always a point where you think, is there any way back? Uh, and you think it was just the, the way that they were giving up those leads. That yeah, it's really kind of forced Shrewsbury Town's hand a little bit. Yeah, it, it felt to me, it felt too far gone. It felt uh, certainly with supporters who, of course, aren't there. They're watching on from home. It felt like they would need a, a bit of a miraculous turnaround, you know, a run of wins. I mean, like a handful, half a dozen, to mm. to start to get people back on side. Really, given the given the the frustration and the understandable frustration, really, with, with results and and you just didn't see a run like that coming. I don't think. I, I don't. Mm. You know, I think confidence and belief was was hurting and taking a dive after each defeat. You are spot on. You know, three league games in a row, they've given up a lead. You know, to lose and draw. I think they've done that five games out of thirteen. Say mm -hmm. one one win. You know, I think it's nine points from from thirteen games. It's it's a dreadful start, and you know they were, they were hopeful of so much better. I think this season, um, hopeful of improvement. Obviously, the manager changed the sort of formation and style in lockdown, and we're hopeful of delivering you know something a bit better. And obviously, we've seen more goals certainly of late, but the, the way it's gone defensively, mm -hmm. um, it's a bit of a I would say a mystery, you know, I'm sure the contributing factors have been a lot of changes, fitness enforced and, and just changes might not have helped. But certainly at the back, they've, they became so easy to play and score against. And when they did take leads in games, they it looked like they didn't quite know what to do and have any confidence that they would get that, that all important win. And yeah, it's just, it's it's a shame. It's a shame to see anyone lose their job, and you know, but it's it feels like it's been a while coming, and obviously fans have have been calling for it for a while. They, they return to the meadow next week, don't they? Fans next Wednesday, mm. and that would have been pretty much unthinkable at this stage. I think, you know, given the the frustration, you hear the radio phone ins, the, the social media, the forums. It's uh, it it really uh, became quite difficult. I think for everyone, to be honest, and. Um, and this this period after the MK Dons game, just an ideal time for the club to act, really. And and now they've got a a big week, a big few days, a uh, big big appointment to make. That's it. And you know, Shrewsbury Town. You look you look now. The the big job for them is 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 picking you know someone to, someone to follow up and and fill that void now. Uh, and obviously, looking at the bookies, there was only ever going to be one man as favourite, wasn't there? And yeah. It's, it's, it's none other than former boss Paul Hurst. I mean, yeah. where, where, do, where does Shrewsbury stand here? Um. Well, first thing to say is I've got um, you know a bit of a plug 
hoping to to do an update on that tomorrow in terms yeah. of uh, in terms of that story. Obviously, it is the story. You know, they'll receive many applications from all corners of the globe, all walks of types of management. Um, there'll mm. be some. I'm sure some in work managers down the down the pyramid will will register an interest. I'm sure there'll be a lot of out of work managers who, you know, are recently out of work, out of work for a long time, who want to be getting in touch. There will be an array, but you're right, Hurst in my eyes at the moment feels like the story. Um mm. he's been sort of not intentionally by the way, he's been looming available, you know, out of work while this you know, pressure is continuously built on on Sam Ricketts, and a lot of supporters would would want him. You know, a lot of supporters want him back. Um, mm. On the flip side, some supporters don't. I've I've given my opinion on it to a few on Twitter in terms of I I would um, forgive and forget personally. Um, I think he took a massive opportunity to go to Ipswich. You know. Mm-hmm life-changing in terms of career life-changing in terms of money i'm sure um yeah it was tough after the playoff final but look it's it's very difficult to comment on it it's, it's my opinion and my opinion doesn't count frankly um but i think i think it's, it feels ideal timing basically that's that's mm. my opinion on it um i say i've got a bit of an update to, to run tomorrow in tomorrow's shropshire star and and online so hopefully fans can see a bit more about on that obviously chief executive brian caldwell has spoken before on the Hurst situation. He spoke in yeah. November 2018, um, shortly before they appointed Ricketts, actually, and and said it's too soon for Hurst to come back, you know, quoted how he, he left just after the playoff final. You know, there must have been interviews with Ipswich before the biggest game in the club's history, all of this. Mm. Um, I don't... Obviously, that viewpoint will have had to have changed dramatically for it to happen. Um, so we, we shall see. In terms of Hurst, like I say, I've got I've got a bit more to come, so I don't want to say too much here. But yeah, he's a story, and he's certainly a big part of this speculation, this process. Um, it will be interesting to see how it develops, and I hope to be able to bring some more about how it develops. Um, but I think Hurst would be um, keen to come back, certainly. Yeah, and then obviously plenty of other names as well being linked, but it's all all bookies chit chat at the moment. Um, yeah. How quick do you reckon this could happen, Lewis? Because obviously, you know, they've got the FA Cup game. Do they, do they leave, you know, a caretaker boss in charge for yeah, that one? Yeah, they've been very coy, haven't they? They haven't said a lot at all um, in this morning's statement. Obviously, Sam Ricketts and Dean Whitehead left. Mm. Uh, interestingly, goalkeeper coach Brian Jensen hasn't. Um, mm. Might have thought and been assumed he was part of that that sort of clique, that group. But he stayed... Um, obviously, previously goalkeeper coach Danny Coins took took the caretaker reins. So whether Jensen will play a part in that this time around remains to be seen. But I had heard a couple of whispers that that could happen. Um, it's quite thin on the ground, really. I mean, you have Dave Edwards, thirty uh, four year old mm-hmm. midfielder, who I don't I don't think would love the idea of doing the caretaker job for an extended period. I, I really don't get that impression. I think he wants to you know concentrate on being a midfielder. Mm. Um, but I think he'll help out for a, a, a very short term period if he has to as part of a group. You know, it's it's a lot to ask of Dave alone. I think at this, you know, he's still a footballer. He's not, you know, he's he's not ready to become a player coach or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. and then there's um, there's David Longwell of the academy, the academy manager. We've seen an academy manager in Eric Ramsey step in before. David Longwell, um, an ally of of Brian Caldwell, fellow Scott. I think they worked together at St Mirren. Um, and and he's another figure that could realistically take the, the caretaker role. Um, they say they're playing the cup Sunday, like like you pointed out. And while it feels like it needs to be a quick appointment, you know, three four days, we know how long these things take. It, it seems like a bit of a stretch, and it's it's a big game. It's worth a lot of money on Sunday, but it's a game Shrewsbury expected to win, and a game they could probably be able to use a caretaker team for. You know, it's mm. uh, before the league game on on the Wednesday in front of the fans against Accrington. Um, so yeah, I, I I see the likes of Jensen being heavily involved. Um, I think Dave Edwards will will play a part, even if it's only link in between you know players and and interim management and and possibly David Longwell because like I say there there are few options really and um, and yeah the club are just working away now obviously receiving the applications, sounding out managers, receiving interest. Um, 
and, and seeing which way to turn next. You know, they'll have their idea. It, one thing worth saying, it's a, it's a huge, big appointment. You know, John Askey didn't work mm-hmm. after Paul Hurst, Sam Ricketts. It's been in two years, but, you know, a lot of fans' frustration. Look where they are on the table now. You know, it's hard to say over the extended two years period. There have been great memories in the Cup, but I think I wrote in my comment piece, you know, it's they've gone backwards, have declined, certainly mm-hmm. in recent weeks and recent months, you know. So realistically, that is an appointment that over the long term didn't work out, you know, a failed appointment. So it's a big one, this this third one. It's a big one for those making the decision. It's one that Town can't afford to get wrong. You know, they're 23rd with one win from a quarter of the season. Can't get this appointment wrong because you worry, you, you desperately worry about what where that leaves um, the club and the table, to be honest, which is... You know, not a nice thing to say about the reality of the situation, but it'll be interesting. I think there'll be some decent caliber people interested in in the role. But I think one one thing worth saying is there's a lot of talk about your your Cowley brothers, your Danny and Nicky mm. Cowley, your, your Paul Cooks. Um, I've seen Lee Johnson mentioned ex Bristol City. I think from what I understand, um, I think the likes of those w- will be aiming higher than Shrewsbury Town, and it's not a slighter mm. and not a you know, no no dig at Shrewsbury, but these are guys that are managed in the championship that will fancy themselves to get a championship gig down the yeah. bottom bottom end of that division or at the very least a, a top end League One gig, you know, an Ipswich or a Sunderland. Um I just don't think Shrewsbury can compete the likes of those managers. I know that's unfortunate for fans to hear, but I think that's a stark reality really. And that, that should give more of an idea about maybe the pool of, of managers that the town will be, you know, um, shopping him really I think Paul Cook would be absolutely brilliant um, I think the Cowleys would be good but I, I just can't see it I think they're, they're above that and beyond that to be honest sadly mm. to uh, to end the video on a on a sour note but that's that's where that is and yeah I'd be fascinated to, to follow it over the couple of days and over the weeks and see how it goes Certainly will so a massive appointment uh, awaits Shrewsbury Town who will they go for after the Sam Ricketts era for all the news on that you know where to go shropshirestar.com